us and when. Okay, well, evening everybody. Good evening. Um, good evening. This is the last, apart from the AGM, this is the last main meeting of the season. Where's it gone? Hmm. All, in, in, all in our own houses. I can't believe it's gone this quickly. It's just incredible that it's just disappeared so quickly. So we're, we're doing, unusually this year, we're doing all three of our year-end competitions of, of one hit. So I hope it's not too much for you, Nick. <laughs> it's a big ask, I know. We're very lucky to have Nick judging for us. Most of us know Nick. He used to, don't, for those new new members, Nick and his wife Liz used to be members of this club. So we know hey. them, they're good friends of ours. So it's really nice to see you. So a warm welcome. Uh, just a few housekeeping things as usual. Once we start, if everybody can mute themselves and stop screen sharing, it just helps with the bandwidth and everything. And it means that we don't suddenly blurt out, oh, or something at a comment. So as soon as we do that, if everyone can do that, including me, I'm rounding myself as well. I don't think I've anything else to say this week. Um, there will be a, a, an extra session next week, the discussion group next week. I had a few people have been say, saying they're interested. So if you if you want to send me any pictures, so so we do the screen share on my machine, or if you want to do a screen share yourself, that's fine. But anyone's welcome. So I think that's all I've got to say, other than welcome again to Nick. So I'll pass you over to Susan and Nick. So we're starting with PDI of the year, Magically. Okay, let's make a start. Um, before we start on the first image, can can I just say? two things uh, thanks ever so much for inviting me it's always a pleasure to i was going to say come to halstead but to at least join halstead by zoom at the moment um, the other thing of course is is which i'm sure judges say every year to you uh, and i think a few years ago i was privileged to to judge the annual or or, or one of the end of year competitions and, and i'm sure i said the same then but tonight that you've got some very strong images in the competition i've had a quick look um they are the best of the best a lot of these uh, images will almost certainly have won competitions or had high scores during the year. Um, you want me to produce a, a winner and a second and a third, so I'm going to be picky. Um, but please don't take uh, criticism personally. The, the photographs are, are of a high standard and they're the sort of photographs that obviously you've wanted to take. So with that, let's start with the first one, fly tipping. Um, First thing to say is I think I think the colours on this um, make make this picture um, that beautiful sort of um, turquoise iridescent um, sheen on on the back of the fly, the the eyes uh, who needs sunglasses with eyes like that, and then a background that is unobtrusive, and um, it doesn't distract at all. Often when you see insects photographed on particularly yellow flowers, the the, the flower can be so strong in colour that it dominates the whole the whole scene. That isn't the case here. I think um, you, you've chosen, or rather the fly has chosen the flower carefully, or you've pulled the yellows back a bit, but it, it's not overpowering and, and the insect stands out. I like the diagonal angle, the body of the insect. The one thing I would say though is I think you've taken this to the limit of, of um, in, enlargement from a macro shot. If you look at, particularly as we look at it on the left-hand side, the, the legs are just starting to pixelate a little bit um, and at the back of the far wing as well. So I think um, that's not a, a particularly adverse criticism, but I think you, you wouldn't want to push this much further in terms of enlarging it. Thank you. Back to you. Right. Oh, I'm trying to, it's not moving on, so maybe. I think it's on the sixth Yeah, lovely bit of storytelling. Um, and um, it, it, obviously a, a, a lot of images have gone in to make this with um, what, what looks to be Whitby Abbey, but I'm not absolutely certain. I go up the steps to Whitby Abbey, but never get to the top on turn around and take pictures like everyone else does on the way up the steps. Um, the grass is the landscape element of the picture have been held back nicely. Um, and then you've put um, your, your pie with the um, blackbirds in um, prominent. The, the, it effectively uh, balances against the, the abbey at the back, um, produces a diagonal, which is reinforced by that water. 
Um, and then I'm not a great fan of textures in, in skies on pictures, but I think for a, a composite like this, it, it works really well. And um, I am enjoying that, that, uh, that texture. So I think it, it, it balances and it works together well. I'm not sure whether the music is um, that we, we can see that, that the pie is resting on is uh, Sing the Song of Sixpence or not. And I, and I am sure that the, I haven't counted them, but I'm sure there's more than 24 blackbirds there. Um, but, but a great bit of storytelling and a, and a very confident piece of, of composite work. Thank you. Progressive music. Yeah, this is fun, isn't it? I, I'm afraid um, those of you that know me know that, the, that my uh, take on technology is over on the left hand side, not the right hand side. Um, uh, and you've, you've got a, a journey through, um, certainly, um, you, you don't start with uh, phonographs and 78s, but you, you, it's a journey through the last 50 years of, of how we listen to music, I guess. Um, and, and as such, it's a, I don't know whether it was done for a specific theme competition or whether it's just something you wanted to do, but it, it's enjoyable. It's a, it's a record shot, if you'll excuse the pun. It, um, it takes us from uh, through a, a journey as we move across and we can see whether they're your tastes in music or whether you've um, picked up some, some CDs and, and records just for this shot, I'm not sure. You've shot it from above and you've positioned the, particularly the, uh, the records and the discs um, almost facing to the camera. And I think that works well. And I like the size of the, of the elements in this picture because they're not so prominent that I want to read what the, what the tracks are and all the details. Um, the trouble with signs is, as we all know in photographs, is if you're not careful, uh, your eye goes to, to reading them. Um, so I think this works well. I like the colour mix of, of the um, sleeves of the records as well. Thank you. Jessica. Yeah. Um, I think what I like about this is the angle that um, the photographer has, has directed Jessica. Um, to, to hold a head, that diagonal is strong. Um, you're almost looking up a little bit at Jessica. And I think that, that creates, with any portrait, looking slightly up creates an impression um, of strength, uh, a strong character we're looking at. Uh, and that comes through, I think, with, uh, with Jessica. I like the, the background uh, uh, and the way that works with the image with her hair which whether it's auburn or whether it's been lit slightly that way um and then her very red lips i think all of that the color goes together very very well and it doesn't distract at all from looking at, at jessica's face which i guess is is what you want us to do um it, it, there are a couple of highlights on her face with um you know, where there's reflection from the from the lighting um that just does detract a little bit um, and I think the other thing is there's that, that, that uh, I, I think her hair is, is attractive, but I think that one hair that runs across under her lip, once you see it, you sort of keep going back to it. Um, and one of the downsides of, of sort of looking up is if you're not careful, um, you're sort of looking up, up Jessica's nose as well, which isn't very nice. Um, but I think it's a strong portrait. Thank you. Yeah, this gives that feeling of being at the fair, doesn't it? Of, of the movement, the lights, um, the, the, the swirling um, cars that are, are, are rushing around this ride. And um, what I particularly like is that you've caught the, the there's two people in that uh, in that car just to the left of centre um, with the, the girl looking straight at the camera. I'm sure if she swirls around, she can't see the camera at all, but, but it's almost looking, looking at you. And then the guy in his little kiosk um, lit up um, possibly watching television or whatever, but lit up, um, watching the ride and supervising the ride. But you just get that feeling of movement. You can almost feel the vibration and, and hear the noise and the trundling of the of the ride as it looks around. You you crop this very <clears throat> very accurately, symmetrically. Um, we've got the words at the top and the and all the artwork that you need without it being too distracting. And um, you've got this this strong base with the with the blue lights at the bottom. I do wonder if those, if you had cropped it slightly higher at the bottom and we lost those blue lights, I think it, it, moving the bright light away from the edge of the frame would have drawn us even more into what's going on. As it is, the, um, the detail around the, the sort of kiosk and the, and the cars is almost, um, 
blasted out really by those bright blue lights. Thank you. Off to work. Yeah. Um, very Asian subcontinent by, by the look of it. Um, and um, very, very, very coordinated riding, three in at three abreast. I guess that's very handy for having a conversation and so on as you, as you go to work. Um, the, the, the shot is is strongly backlit. We've got that haziness in the background and, and a, a ray of light coming over the top of the trees behind the rider on our left hand side. And you've got those very interesting shadows down on the um, the pavement, the, um, the the roadway. Uh, we can't see all of the shadows, but um, that's uh, echoes in a way that the sort of wheels and the pedals and the movement. The because it's backlit, I think the faces of the three riders, particularly the one on the left, uh, uh, could do with lightning very slightly, just to pull out a bit more detail. And of course, the background is um, is quite messy because they you've caught them uh, as they're th three abreast, but right going past what appears to be a, a, a shop at the back with all sorts of detail on. So there's a lot of distractions around this one. Uh, I am intrigued what's in the blue the blue flask on the handlebars. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's the fact that I think what makes this that there's, there's three abreast um, cycling along. And I like the, the title you've given it, which just reinforces what's going on. Thank you. Cuban car. Yeah, I, I, um, I like the simplicity of this. Um, the photographer, as far as I can see, has taken the, the colour out of this shot um, of, uh, of this old car, which um, it, it, you know, it is what uh, I think still today um, run on the streets of, of Cuba. Um, and you've taken the colours out and then reintroduced the blue of the car. And I, I wondered as I looked at it whether the car was blue originally or that's the colour you've cho chosen to make it. Uh, doesn't matter. But um, and then you've picked out in the same colour the, the lamp and the what appears to be a wire or a hose pipe uh, and just put a hint of colour in those two signs. I think the position of the car in the frame is, is great. The um, size of the car in the frame uh, and the juxtaposition between the curves of that 1950s American car and the architecture of the building um, work really well together. It's a simple picture. Um, and yeah, I think it's very powerful. So can I hold that one back, please? Memphis. Yeah, um, some, some, we're just getting to the clematis season, I suppose, uh, when, the, when the cold weather goes and, and flowering and so on. And they are attractive flowers and all, all the species of uh, or varieties of cultivars, I suppose they are, of, of clematis have all got slightly different shaped flowers. And these are attractive and um, I, I like the colour and the colour, the purple set against the green of the stems and uh, of the flowers that have, have um, turned into seed heads. It makes interesting shapes. You've got a couple of stems here at least, um, set against a, a textured background. What I do, I think the texturing of the background for me is a little bit too strong. I think these are delicate flowers and, uh, and the stems. And it's a shame in a way that, um, that they're almost competing against this, what, what all appears to be almost a sort of um, a pebble dash wall. And then you've got the very bright area in the back, just at the point where you really want the viewer to look at the flowers and, and admire them. It, they're set against a very bright background. So I'm not sure that this one um, I like the idea of it, uh, and I like the, the fact that you've got um, some seed heads which have either fallen or been taken off and, and, and put the three of them around it, and that makes the shot interesting. Thank you. Lines. Um, this made me think of the, what was it called, the dazzle pattern that, um, that um, I think warships had applied to them in the First World War to, to confuse the, uh, the U-boat commanders. And um, there are uh, the, the, the stripes and the, um, uh, and the angles here are very interesting. And I think you've waited for uh, these couple people to come along uh, and you shot them 
shot the image right in the middle, and yet you've got room on uh, on the right to them to move because you, in addition to that sort of oblong area of um, with the diagonals in it that's there right in front of you, have got that area on the right. It's um, it's not a subtle, quiet, relaxing shot, is it? It's it's very much in your face. I like the um, fact that the two individuals are in step, um, that, that, that their um, back legs are sort of at exactly the same angle. Um, although I, I do wish there was just a little bit more separation between them. Um, the the um, I think it's a lady at the back. You can't really see her face because of the hood uh, of the person in front. Also, that um, I don't know what it is—an alarm or, or or a light up in the top right-hand corner. Um, sort of breaks the pattern a little bit. I think it, it would be have been stronger without that, but I don't. Well, I'm not quite sure how you would go about removing it. Thank you. Copy time. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is. I think what makes this shot for me is that the unusual cup, the cup and saucer, um, which, which are very different. And um, as you sort of look, look carefully at them, they they are a bit. Um, a bit mind blowing, aren't they? The way the cup wraps around and becomes a handle. The you shot it on either a mirror or probably a black tile, so we've got a reflection. Um, uh, the coffee beans, although they're dark against the, the black background, are, are clear enough and form that link between the the measure that they're being tipped from, seemingly, uh, and the and the cup. Um, and they even get ground halfway down, which is good. Um, and they do they do link up nicely. Uh, I also like the little touch that um, the, the bright colour here is the red of the spoon, and you've picked that up with the key line that you've run around the outside of the of the frame. And it does need that key line key line just to hold the the image in, uh, particularly if you were projecting this. And you, if without a key line, it would just bleed into the into the edges of the of the projection screen. Um, so I'm enjoying this, and I like the curve on the on the. Uh, line of beans as well as they as they head for the cup. Can we hold that one back, please, Susan? Elliptical. Yeah, I, I looked at this and, and 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 thought about how it had been done. Not not that it matters how it's been done. I mean, we're talking about what what we're looking at, and I really like the idea. Um, I, I think you've chosen three very strong colours, um, and. Um, I, I'm guessing they're, they're dividers out of a, an A4 file, uh, different colours, and um, you, you form them into almost elliptical shapes and then lit them. My only um, criticism of, of what is, I think, a very effective picture is, to me, that the lighting is a little bit too bright, and particularly on the left-hand side, as we look at it, the, the yellow has got that white light, and having the brightest part of the of the image right over on the edge, I think it takes our eyes away from perhaps where you want us to look, which is where the, the red and the blue and the yellow meet together. Um, it, it's crop tight and I think that works well and it's very abstract. Um, maybe my interpretation of what it is is wrong, I don't know. But it, it's, um, it's certainly an interesting shot, but I just wish it wasn't quite so bright on the outside. Thank you. Enough for today. I like the title. I, I like the fun of it. Um, when you first glance at this, um, you, the figures, particularly the figure in a lady, I think, girl, in the uh, grey trousers suit, um, doesn't stand out at all with her face not, not showing. Um, and I think this is a classic. I'm, I'm assuming you've not directed this at all. Um, you, you've simply seen this. Um, uh, and well done for seeing it and spotting the potential of it. And then you've given it a great title that, that, that ties it all together. Um, I, I'm guessing it's their, um, they're worn out from going around the art gallery and are, uh, are having a, a quick doze on the bench uh, in front of this, this wonderful work of art. Um, what on earth the uh, painting is called, I don't know, but um, it's obviously lost on these two. So well seen, thank you. Old roses. Yeah, uh, we, as photographers, I mean, we like old boats, um, old buildings, and um, flowers that are past their sell-by date, I think, are always attractive um, to, to us. And um, 
I think you, you've chosen, uh, as the as the name and title suggests, um, some some old roses. Um, you've positioned the petals that have fallen from the roses as they're slowly going past their best and starting to uh, to wither and die, um, and put them in a very interesting jug. I think the background works well. Um, not a great fan of ornate um, framing or key lines, but I think that works well with this with this shot. But I'm not sure about the texture on the on the roses at all. I think the the, the joy of these sort of um, dying flowers is the textures they make themselves without having uh, a texture applied. And I'm assuming uh, it, I've never seen roses quite quite this sort of textured as they uh, as they wither and die. Um, but um, I like the idea of it. I, I just think it's, uh, to me, it's just a little bit too far. Thank you. Grace in Kelpie. Yeah. Um, when we moved up to Norfolk, we had um, a, an old couple in, in North Norfolk Photographic Society, and um, it became a bit of a standing joke. They, um, they often went to Scotland and um, she liked, the, the, Margaret liked taking pictures of the Kelpies and virtually every competition that, that, that she could put them in, she would put a picture of the Kelpies, every picture very, very different, different angles, different positions, different sizes, all sorts of things. So I've had a, I've had a lot of uh, Kelpie experience looking at them. Uh, and this is different, um, this, this grass bank, um, which fits with the title of the grazing Kelpies. Um, and obviously the, um, it's not been played with. I mean, you do see shots where there are three or four of them and obviously they've been duplicated in the, in the frame. But uh, these two look the original two, um, but I'm not sure whether this bank is, is there and you've, um, you've got behind it or whether you've put that in. I, I suspect it's there, but a very different picture. And um, you've got some nice sky detail. The sky works well, the, um, the, the shiny metal of the, uh, of the sculptures works well against the the dark sky. Um, the greens are held back reasonably well. They're not too too bright and vivid as they can be. Um, so it's different, and um, I like the title. Thank you. Yeah, um, you've got some lovely reflections in the in the water. Um, the water level looks low, uh, so I'm guessing that this is, I was, I was thinking it was the canal, but I'm, I'm wondering if it's some sort of tidal uh, water. Um, but you've obviously got the estuary to the right hand side, and that water um, with its reflections leads you down towards the, 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 the little town or large village. And we've even got a reflection of the houses in the water as well. Um, some detail in the sky with uh, with, with some clouds and it's certainly not over processed and overdone. In fact, for me, I think it would, it would benefit from a little bit more detail, a little bit more perhaps clarity, or if you're a, if you're a user of the latest versions of, um, of, of Lightroom, the, the texture control, the texture slider, but something to really put more punch into those grasses and the distant to hills and perhaps a little bit more into the sky as well. As it is, I feel it's a little bit flat, but I do like that that lead in that takes us down the down the water. Thank you. That's a in snow. Yeah, I don't. Um, I'm not sure how you've um, how you've got this close to the the buzzard, which has obviously got uh, got a kill, which looks as if it's been there a little while and it's perhaps coming back to feed, um, and it's got its wings sort of overarching, protecting the the kill from uh, any other passing. Um, birds of prey or, or anything else that might pinch it. Um, <clears throat> there's a great a catch light in the eye. Um, the feather detail is absolutely smashing. Um, you've got not only the, the detail of the individual feathers, but you can actually look at, at, at the rest of the bird and see the different shapes of feathers in the, in the different parts of the of its plumage, um, the detail under the wings, um, whether you very carefully lighten that um, a little or whether you've um, the, the reflection from the snow. I mean, that's always one of the big advantages of shooting in snow for, for natural history. You do get the light reflected up under things um, that would normally be very dark. Um, the, the buzzard's keeping its eye on you, I think. 
I like the size in the frame. Um, I think the snow works well. There's, there's detail around it, which I think has been caused by the the, the buzzard rather than um, there's no there's no size nine foot, footprints, uh, Wellington boot footprints in there. Um, and that little bit of detail at the back just um, uh, reinforces and frames the uh, the bird. Can we hold that one back, please? Particles. Yeah, party is the right word for this, isn't it? The, the, the shapes um, and the colours, I think, are great. Um, and I think you've put it on a, uh, a base, um, whether it's Perspex and you've got some light under it, I, I'm not sure. But it, uh, the base uh, and the way the um, yellow, red, um, blue and the green glasses, then you've got the clear bottle at the back with a, with a coloured stopper. I think it's a great combination. It's tight. You've cropped it tight. You, we don't need to see all of the two um, bits of glassware on the outsides of the, of the picture at all. Um, it's got a three-dimensional feel to it because you've, you've demonstrated um, by overlapping that, um, that this is, I don't know, a foot, a foot or more deep uh, in the picture. Um, and you've got uh, reflections in the in the glass as well, particularly in that green glass. Um, for me, the, the the bottles are in and the shapes are in the right position with that very strong um, circular shape uh, with the interesting uh, lip on the on the top of it, uh, the green one in the right position and in the prominent position. Um, and the red and the green, of course, work well together as as complementary colours as to the blue and the yellow. So it's a it's a it's great. I, I'm not going to hold it back. Um, it, it's if it's an, a close run thing, but um, I am enjoying this one a lot. Thank you. Bars with nine sunflowers. Yeah, a very precise title. Um, I, I would have settled for for vars with sunflowers. Um, and we've got a, a very plain background. We've got um, the the flowers arranged nicely, and again we've got a few petals down just to indicate that they're perhaps standing there. Uh, and um, a little bit of sort of murk in the water. The distortion that's been applied uh, is pretty universal. We've got the um, the join between the backdrop and the the base, the vase itself, and of course the the flowers. I mean, I I, I might have been confused about the the vase and thought, is this a, a very strange vase? But um, the flowers have the have the distortions as well, so that tells tells us. Um, yeah, it's um, the colour palette. I think is very pleasing here with the, the base, um, even the stems, uh, which are, which are not bright green. You know, I think you've held the greens back a little bit here um, because the leaves that are immediately around the sunflower heads um, are quite um, subdued as well. And then you've got these two um, centres with the seed uh, heads developing already uh, on the flowers um, uh, right in front of us. I think that that works well. It's crop tight, uh, and I think that's fine for for a shot like this. Thank you. White gerber. Yeah, no. Um, this is uh, appears to be a piece of macro or close up lens or attachment work. The depth of field, I'm sure, as you wanted it, is is wafer thin. Um, we've just got the not even the whole of the. Um, the, the center of the, the flower, um, just a few of the stamen and and, um, and and the detail there, and that one petal with the water droplet on the end of it and the water that, that are reasonably sharp. The rest is, is very, very soft. And that's great. And I think that's a really good use of differential depth of, of, of focus, depth of field, sorry, uh, of focusing. Um, I, I find the petals that are obviously on our side uh, of the flower and they're represented here in the bottom right hand corner. Um, to me, there's just not quite enough detail in them, which is a shame. I think it, it almost obscures the, the head a little bit. The, the petals beyond, um, I think, are fine with enough detail to see what they are. But um, you want us to concentrate on the little bits that we're looking at, the, the water drop blitz on the petals and just the detail in that head. Again, the colours are, are work really well together and the position in the frame so that we're, we're almost looking up and out. If it were a portrait, we'd say you've got room for it to, to look into. And I think that's that's what's happening here. Thank you. The three amigos. 
I, I do like this and and what I like about it is the idea that there are the, the three black-headed goals obviously taken shot in the winter um we're busy looking to our left and um and the one that um, you've focused on and it have got um uh, all the detail in the in the certainly in the in the breast and so on uh, has turned around and is looking um not at the camera not at the photographer but off at something on the other side so you've got um, two looking one way and one looking the other way and i like the way you've um, chosen to focus this and use the aperture you've used which has given us one sharp um girl and two that aren't sharp and i think that that works well and that of course works equally on whatever it is they're standing on on, on the metal um the, the, it's a bit bright on on this one you the shaded side of it you've got some um image that we can see the detail of but it is a bit burnt out on this side but this isn't about sort of fine portraiture of of, of birds this is a, a bit of a fun shot and the title uh, suggests that and I, I think you know the three amigos probably works for this thank you school girls from Odo Island yeah um this is I mean this is the, the, the girls are having great fun with with you as the photographer uh, and that comes through in the picture. Um, I think it looks as if it's been taken in, perhaps in a schoolroom, and um, with the with the coloured spots and things on the on the wall at the back. The um, the expressions, how much um, you had to direct uh, the, the 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 girls, and how much they adopted this, I, I'm not sure, and it doesn't matter at all. The composition, I love. I, I love the girl that's nearest to us with the red pen in her pocket. Um, leaning right into the picture, providing a, a strong diagonal and, and a lead in to the girl at the back that's um, um, smiling at us. The angles, the, the fact that um, the girl on the left hand side is leaning in as well. And then the, uh, the cheeky one with the tongue out. Um, I, I do think it, it's fun. I'm sure this, um, this pose and this uh, uh, grouping lasted for a few seconds and went uh, and they did something else but they're clearly enjoying having the picture taken and I'm enjoying uh, looking at it and I'm sure uh, you all are as well um the you know if you're nitpicking the the light coming in from the window um is a bit bright and just distracts uh, a little bit but um that's not what this is about it's uh, it's just a fun a fun group of girls having fun uh, hold that one back please Nick. Yeah, um, this has got a, 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 a feel of a, a little bit of HDR in it, and I think it's um, it's not overdone at all. And I think it works well just pulling out the detail in both the road and the uh, and the pavements and in the um, the pan tiles on the on the roofs of the houses. Uh, you've taken it from a high position, a, a building or a tower or something, um, a bridge maybe even over the over the road. Um, so you're looking down on the roofs. Um, we don't know what the building is at the end. It looks like a castle. It doesn't matter. And then these almost Lowry like figures that are um, going about their business. Um, nearest figures, the lady appears to be looking into a, a shop that's got um, goods on the pavement. Uh, and the family group and um and then the, the little groups i think that for me the number of people is 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 just right you don't want um uh, too many you don't want too few i think it's good that there's some empty space at the bottom of the picture which leads as we look at it the um particularly those two sort of uh, uh, gutters on the edge of the pavement um just converge towards the gate of the castle at the end and just draw us in framed by the houses framed by the the roofs um i i, I we don't need to see more i think it, it works well so can we hold that one back too please mm. it, very simple um very pastel uh colors aren't strong the leaves aren't strong I think the composition works really well with just that simple one stem of, of freesia and another um, that crosses over it. Um, it forms a, a focal point for me in the picture uh, as the uh, two stems cross and the two flowers come out at virtually the point at which they cross. 
Uh, and then they're almost sort of framed um, and supported by the uh, little um, leaf, leaf um, stems that come out underneath them. Um, the colours are very subtle. I think um, the background on this one is ideal for this picture. It's not too strong. It's not distracting. Uh, and it, the flowers that you want us to look at are not shot against a, a bright area, but um, in fact, the brighter area, but it's not too bright, is, is around the edge of the, of the image. Um, it's not cropped close. And I think for, the, for a subject like that, this works really well. Can we hold that one back, please? Mm. Well, you've got a, an extreme depth of field here. Um, it's a reasonably wide angle lens you've used, whether you've um, uh, managed to stack this or just use a very, very small aperture. But the railing that we're looking at that's very prominent in the shot is only just going a little bit soft right up against the left hand side of the of the image. Um, the stanchions that the, hold the rail up are, are sharp and textured, some beautiful textures. Um, and then you've got the wet um, planking uh, that uh, all those lines of planks that all lead us up and the railings lead us up to that one solitary figure uh, and, and gosh doesn't this need that figure to uh, to make this picture. Um, there's a lot of, um, of empty space over in the top left hand corner and I think again the image and the composition needs that but um, the, the, the silhouetted figure is the focal point and I think it just draws the eye there's nowhere else you can look. Wherever you start, you're going to end up with that figure. Um, not sure what this is on the on the planks, very close up on the right hand side, uh, a bit of litter or whatever. Um, maybe you included that deliberately um, because it just breaks the pattern. Um, I don't dislike it. It just you've got to be careful. Your eye doesn't go back to it. Thank you. Fine bottom glass. Yeah, the um, I mean, it's, it's um, a very low key shot and very cleverly lit um, with some lighting off to the right as we look at it. Uh, so that effectively, the edges of the bottles are, or the bottle and the glass are, are backlit. Um, and we've got some, some interesting color. Um, and you can see just from that little hint, glint of, of light, um, the shape of the bottle the shape of the glass, the relative position between the bottle and the glass. And again, rather cleverly, you, you've picked out um, the key line um, to pick up the picture, the, the colours, which I'm guessing you've, you've put through a filter uh, on your light. Um, but there's absolute minimum of detail here, and yet we know what we're looking at. So I think it's, um, it works well. I think the shapes support this a lot. And the lighting has been done particularly cleverly, as has the positioning of the of the two items. Thank you. Raw shadow. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, I can see see what this is about, but to me, this is a little bit complicated. We've got um, we've got the um, very defined area of light um, against this black um, background. Um, it looks as if it's um, uh, very shaded area with some light coming through a window, but maybe you've been you've lit it artificially in a way that it makes it look that way. Um, and you've got that strong diagonal of the white area, the um, shadow of the um, what looks to be an allium seed head. It may not be, but it, it, it's a seed head of some sort. And then you've got the bottle that the stem is standing in um, with its distinct colour but it's almost adjacent to the shadow and I like the arrangement where you've got the coloured seed head and then the um, silhouette of the seed head in, in its, uh, its shadow. To me perhaps the blue bottleneck just adds a degree of, of complication to this um, that spoils the simplicity of it. Thank you. I really must get out more. Um, I, I, I love this. Um, it, what do I like about it? Well, the contrast between the tones of the wood um, and the um, Heinz beans 
Um, there are other companies that make beans, I'm told, but um, the Heinz beans tin. I like the way it's lit. Um, you wouldn't want this to be too bright. You've, you've got a, a real dark corner in the cupboard. You've got um, the, the darkness under the tin, just the rim showing in, in, in lit. Uh, and you've got um, the, the tin lit in, in such a way that it, we can read it and see it very clearly, but it's not um, too bright. You're not getting horrible reflections off the, off the rims. Um, whether this was for a theme competition originally or whether it was um, simply a, 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 a social comment um, about uh, lockdown and, and so on, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to hold it back. Again, it's one that um, if I could hold more back or give commendeds or whatever, it would, it would be up there. I am enjoying it. And, and I like the angle of the, uh, of the tin, which almost looks a little bit intoxicated at that angle leaning in the corner. Thank you. Studio art. Yeah, a vase with some flowers in. But isn't it different? Um, the colours, the shape and size of the of the vase in the in the image in the frame, um, the background that um, graduated background, both in terms of. Um, of the light and the colour going from quite a, a lighter mauve up through to a sort of a, almost greeny blue at the top with that um, yellow. The three small flowers, which are obviously key to the picture, but are not the dominant part of the picture, unlike other pictures we'll look at tonight where the flowers are the, are the real hero. Uh, for me, it's the, it's the vase and the colours uh, and don't they work well together? Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a shot quite like this. I'll hold that one back, please. The gentle yeah, um, and it, it, if you look at the petals, isn't it gentle? Isn't it? Isn't it soft and subtle? Um, and doesn't it suit uh, a flower like a lily to be to be um, photographed like that? The only um, sort of hard architecture in this is the stamens, the uh, the dreaded pollen that falls everywhere uh, on the end of it, but. Um, and, and a, a very mottled sort of background. Um, one very minor criticism of it, I mean, is that the lightest area of the picture is right around the edge. Uh, it's almost like a, a light vignette, and I'm not sure it needs that. Um, I think to continue the tone from the center of the background out uh, to that key line would, would have been sufficient. I do like the very out of focus flowers that are around it. Um, I think they, they help, and the angle particularly, um, and that cross between the stem and the stamens going one way and the angle of the uh, petals on the left and on the right going in the other way. Thank you. Reflection of Scotland. Yeah, I mean, compared with some of the shots tonight, I have to say this, this isn't a high impact shot. It, it's um, a very pleasing landscape. Um, and you've got uh, different landscaping, um, elements in this. You've got the water, you've got the sky, the rather barren uh, mountain at the back, and then these, uh, this plantation of, of trees with another one echoing it, uh, the same shapes behind, uh, and that run of fence. The whole thing, of course, then um, perfectly reflected in what is very still water. The, I'm sure when you took this picture, um, you, uh, your camera was, was level and you may have a, a spirit level in your camera or, or, um, or on your camera that will tell you that it's level. But the optical illusion of this is that it almost looks as if the water is running away to the right because of the angle you're at relative to the, um, the far bank. And also the, 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 the trees are not helping in that sense because they're exaggerating that, that angle. Um, yeah, I, I, I like to call myself a landscape photographer and I often find I always um, use a tripod and I always set the camera up and use the um, leveling device in, in the camera uh, when I'm setting up the shot. But often you find then you're having to adjust when you post process and take it away from the true horizon in order to make it look right. That's, that's one perhaps to think about with this. Thank you. Running light. Yeah. Um, I think 
I think there's three things that that I really enjoy about this. The movement. Um, yes, you, you've shot it at a reasonably fast shutter speed, but the fact that um, they're running, the expressions on both the, well, all three individuals' faces, um, the fact that um, they got that lovely uh, expression on the, on the lady's face, uh, you can believe that she's perhaps, uh, she's late, the train's about to go and she's seen whoever it is that they're going on the train with. Um, it, it's reenactment, um, but it's um, it's been very well done. The cases and things like that are the, are the right details. But I also like the guard, who's who's um, slightly bemused by it all and quite wonders what's going on. Um, I, I, I do enjoy this a lot. The, there is a little bit of brightness up on the top right hand corner on the signal box roof, uh, but to me that doesn't detract at all from from this. So can we hold that one, please? OK, um, I know you've got a lot to get through tonight, so I can um, I can give you my third, second and first. Uh, in third place, the Cuban car, please. OK, in second place, the buzzard in the snow. And then with the roll of the drums, the uh, the winner for me tonight out of some very strong images is running late. And you also asked me to make a judge's pick. Um, and for me, the picture I'd like on my wall isn't one of these at all. It's the vase with the nine sunflowers. So first place is Tory Andrews with running late. Second place is also Tory with buzzard in snow. And third place is Phil Beckett with Cuban Farm. Well done. Well done, Tory. Yeah, well done, Tory. Brilliant pictures. And Jill. Thank you very much. Well done, Jill. Thank you too. And well done to Lorraine, Derek, Jill and Jan and Rosie for the class. How my texture. Yeah. Um Taptarmine, which is right on the north um, coast of, of Scotland, um, and um, I have I have been up there and photographed um, some of the things around Tarmine. Um What I like about this is the textures of the rocks in the foreground. It's very it's very Joe Cornish in the sense you've got to have um, you've got to have some rocks in the in the foreground, and and there's, there's a bit of logic for that because it does draw your eye into the picture. Then you you start there and you work your way in. And particularly with that slightly darker rock at, at the beginning, um, your eyes then move up towards the lighter areas. So I think it, it um, that they're quite key to the picture. I like the angles that the rocks are at. Um, obviously, the sea, uh, sea or an inlet is is to our left. Um, what I do, um, two things that I do find um, a little odd. One is that you've left the um, seaweed um, on, on the left hand side quite bright in, in fact apart from the sky it's the brightest part of the picture and it does tend to draw you away whereas there's to me there's a very distinct line from this darker rock through the rocks going back towards the center of the image so maybe that could be tried to just darken that down a little bit uh, and the other thing because you've got this ridge of the bay here and then the distant um, hills beyond um, I'm looking at it, I'm ever so curious to know what's over the top of the rise. Is it another inlet and more sea or or what? Uh, maybe you could say that intrigues the, 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 the viewer, I don't know. Um, it's got depth to it, certainly, and you've got that sort of almost recession from the, from the haze uh, on the distant hills. Thank you. 
inside centre. Okay, it's a colour print competition, and don't the colours work well here? Yeah, the the uh, the green and the purple. Um, no distractions from the background. Beautiful shapes and textures. Um, there's a sharpness throughout. Um, uh, just the very tips of one or two of the petals just starting to uh, go a little soft, and that doesn't bother me at all. But the textures, the pollen sitting in the in the um, uh, the petals, I, I think, and the um, seed head sort of forming, uh, the angles going up to that top right hand corner, uh, and the and the curve on the on the stem, I think, all work really well. Uh, but it is the complementary colours that I think make this strong. Can we hold that one, please? Uzo. Uzo looks a, a cat with um, with an attitude. Um, um, and uh, obviously is very relaxed with um, with the photographer, um, which means he's either an easygoing cat or, or you are the food ticket for him. Uh, I'm not sure which, um, but uh, lovely and sharp, those beautiful eyes, the catch light in the eyes, um, the whiskers, the nose, the um, body of the cat going slightly out of um, focus a little bit, and that doesn't bother me at all. It's the face that we, we want to see and we want to be sharp, and it is. One very minor criticism, you've, you've photographed it on, um, on the sofa by the look of it, and the cushion that's behind, um, that yellow area that uh, is um, right behind the, the cat's head, um, almost sort of competes with the eyes. And I wish in a way that was, that was plainer material, but um, you can't control where cats sit, can you? Thank you. Red deer. Yeah, lovely study of, um, of a red deer in, in the heather, uh, of a hind. Um, it, it, the deer looks as if it doesn't know you're there. Um, it's uh, it, it's a, perhaps taken in an area where the deer are relatively used to people and come down, if it's if it's certainly in, in the highlands of Scotland, come down in the winter to uh, to, to feed in the, in the bottoms of the valleys. But it's... Um, it's a lovely study. I like the light in the in the um, deer's eye. Um, lovely and sharp. Lovely detail uh, in the neck. My only only grouse, minor grouse about this is the darkness of the of the base, and I suspect the photographer has has darkened this down a little bit. Uh, and I think you might have just gone a little bit too far with it. We want um, to focus on the deer. We, we you want us to look at the deer. Uh, but I do think it almost looks a little unnatural at the bottom being being a bit too dark. Thanks. Meerkat. And another mammal looking in the same direction. Um, the the uh, meerkat is sharp. Um, the background is completely unobtrusive, which means every hair on the meerkat's head stands out very, very clearly. Nice catch light in the eye. Um, whether this has been taken, um, I suspect um, it's been taken in captivity. Um, uh, I don't know. The, the background in the meerkat enclosure at Banham Zoo has got that sort of colour that uh, this background's got, but it may not be there at all. It may be in the wild. I don't know. Um, but it's a lovely study. It's a lovely portrait of, of the animal. Um, it's sharp. Um, the, the animal is not looking at you, it's, it's looking beyond, you're not bothering it at all. Taken with a long lens, obviously. Can we hold that one back, please? In the clink. Well, outside the clink, anyway. Um, yeah, we've got an a interesting bit of, um, uh, of a composite here with, um, I'm, I'm guessing, the... Um, what looks to be a courier with his with his uh, high vis jacket and um, mobile phone and uh, uh, and whatever he's got in his hand, his helmet and his sunglasses uh, was probably there outside the prison museum, but I'm rather guessing that the guy in the in the uh, top hat, uh, who looks as if he belongs in managing inside the prison, um, probably wasn't there. Uh, it's it's interesting. I don't think um, it's the strongest of this sort of genre I, I've seen. Um, I, I find the, the the fact that the ghost is sort of combined with the bollard uh, a little bit distracting. 
And um, the relative size, yeah, I mean, you can argue that he, 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 in Victorian times, he might have been that bit shorter than, than our bicycle courier. Um, but he, he's, he doesn't quite sort of fit to me uh, into, the, uh, it, it, into the relationship with the courier. Um, I don't know why I'm saying that, because he's not there at all, and we know that, but it's, it's the image that, that's been created. Thank you. Alstrom area. Yeah, um, I think this is a high impact shot um, of what is a piece of still life. Um, the composition works really well. What's interesting, some of the other flowers we've seen tonight, um, the, the colour palette is very constrained and very similar. But here we've got, um, we've got three different colours on, on the blooms, on the five blooms. Um, the background uh, works well. It provides just a little bit of interest and texture without um, competing. And it's, it's again a shot that I'm not going to hold back um, because I think there are stronger in, in, in this competition. Um, but it's a certainly a, a very near miss and, and it's a very pleasing shot. Thank you. Mother and child from Odo Island. I feel there's a lot of storytelling in this shot. Um, it, it, you get this feeling of, of empathy with the, the figures here. Um, you, you get the feeling, um, and I'm assuming this is shot in, in, in or around the, um, the home of the um, lady and her child, um, but the degree of sort of poverty with the uh, rough boards that, that they're sitting on, um, the, the way the boarding at the back in the corrugated iron uh, and whatever it is that they put across the window at night, um, or create a, a, an environment um, when we've got this direct eye contact with the with the lady, which I think is um, is very engaging, uh, almost almost pleading at, at the photographer, uh, and I think it tugs at the heartstrings a little bit, and that's a very powerful picture if it can do that. Um, so I'm enjoying that. Um, my only minor, minor, minor gripe, gripe is that whatever it is, plastic um, bag or whatever it is, uh, just down in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, I, I wish that wasn't there because I think it spoils the simplicity uh, of this shot. The lighting is lovely. I'm guessing the lighting <clears throat> has come from behind the photographer, perhaps from an open, an open area. This might well be the sort of back step of the house. I don't know. I'd like to hold it back, please. Keeping mass. Mm, Fairfield Church, I think, which is on Romney Marsh, and um, he's a mecca for landscape photographers. If you're down in Kent, um, the, the, you've shot this uh, in the evening, I think, um, certainly at low, very low light, and um, I, I'm suggesting that you've perhaps exposed for the sky, um, or, or perhaps your camera set on to an auto exposure. Um, and you've, you've got the sky and the clouds and even the contrails um, very strong and, and um, very well exposed. You've got that lovely bit of sunlight reflected on the clouds as the sun's gone down over on the left hand side. But to me, the church is just a little bit too dark. Um, this is the, if you like, the, the, the hero of the shot. <coughs> um, and um, it, it is a little bit dark. The textures don't come through and, the, and that brickwork. Excuse me, <coughs> um, but it is, it's an interesting site and you've uh, shot this from across the water. Incidentally, this water is where Thomas a Beckett is supposed to have fallen in and nearly drowned, which is why there's a church there now, um, as I remember. But, um, and you can see the little bridge that you get into the church over on the right hand side. Um, but I just think it, it, it's, um, it needs a little bit more balance in, balance in the exposure. Thank you. Practicums. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I like the idea of this, um, the, the um, low key approach, the um, strong back lighting that um, reflects on the peppers, the colors, the greens and, 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 and um, reds, which of course are complementary colors and work so strongly together. Um, and the vibrancy of, of the red colour. To me, it's all a little bit glossy though. And I don't know whether you've, um, you've done that deliberately to get the light to reflect 
um, the, the stems particularly, um, the stem particularly looks very glossy and um, slightly unnatural to me. Thank you. Big spy. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Um, very, very simple. Tram lines from the from the tractor when the um, winter wheat's been sprayed. Uh, the the strong sky. Um, the, the perhaps um, you've used a polarizing filter to pull those blues out, or perhaps you've done that in post processing. But it's very effective. Um, the, the the clouds just in the sort of right position and probably the right uh, amount of clouds for the sky. Um, the the horizon that draws us uh, uh, and the tram lines that draw us up there. The the sky, particularly just on the horizon, has got that very light area, which is probably another cloud, but almost looks like an aura at the end of the tram line. And I think the greens are particularly bright. Um, very natural, I expect, uh, if, if the shot's been taken at this sort of time of the year, uh, May, June time, um, in, in bright sunlight. but. Um, I think if they were just held back just a touch, um, it would be even stronger and perhaps balance better against the sky. I like the horizon where it is. You certainly, um, I'm not a fan of, of horizons across the middle of the picture. I think this adds a dynamic to the shot. Thank you. Lily Kebab. Yeah, I'm glad I had something to eat before we started tonight. Uh, otherwise, I'd be feeling hungry looking at this. Um, the symmetry of it, I think, the the uh, the, the way it's been organised by the photographer, um, at least I'm assuming by the photographer, um, so that we've got the um, almost a symmetry rotating around that red tomato in the middle. Um, the colours, the red tomato, the green um, tray or stand that it's it's on, um, the absolute horizontal uh, skewer that's running through it. I think there's been a lot of time and effort gone into this shot. Uh, and it pays off. It's lit with what appears to be um, a, a window behind the photographer. And what I particularly like on that tray is the, I don't know whether it's water or an oil that's been put on the kebab before it goes in to be cooked, but just dripping off onto the tray. I think that makes this. Thank you. What's our excuse? Um, I like the title. I like the storytelling that the title conveys. Um, what's really going on probably is the one dog's looking and saying, what have you just had for your tea? But, <laughs> but it, the story, the story comes from the title. Um, what's our excuse? And they look, uh, they look a guilty pair. Lo lovely shot um, and a lovely relationship between the two dogs. And if they're your dogs, you must be delighted with this. Um, it, it is a bit bright on the top of the left hand dog's head. We're just losing um, detail in the top of the head, in the, in the hair and so on. Um, not at all on the right hand. Uh, and it's interesting that the one dog is very clean and the other is very mucky. Um, I'm not sure I'm very keen on the almost white vignetted frame. I'm not sure that adds a lot to this. Thank you. White outcome area. Yeah, um, I like the arrangement of the Alstromera. The, um, detail that you've, you've pulled out it's got a deep depth of field here um, the the flower the petals that are nearest to us and the leaves that are furthest from us and those two buds in the top right corner are, are all sharp enough um, the uh, black background works well it doesn't uh, distract at all we're just looking at that group of, of flowers um, to me there's a there's a reasonably a focal point in the center um, uh, uh, which is the sharpest point I think in the picture um, and then the others rotate around it. My only minor um, grouse on this is that you've got three leaves at the bottom. The leaves are all contained. You've got the top left and top right leaves going out towards the corners of the image. But these two at the bottom uh, go out of the out of the shot. And um, I just wish there was they were in um, and it balanced more um, against the, the top leaves in the flat in the, in the arrangement thanks all right yeah I, I, i'm not sure what's going on here um but i quite like it uh, uh, the um the flower uh, which almost looks unreal but um it uh, it may be a prize daffodil i'm not sure 
I think not. Um, but it's uh, and its stem, which again looks a little bit wooden, in the very nicely shaped little vase uh, for one flower, and then the yellow tissue paper and the and the background beyond. It, it's an Easter sort of shot, isn't it? Um, and it, I'm enjoying it. Um, it's not one of the strongest tonight, I don't think. I like the way you offset the flower and the vase from the centre. Um, and then the, the way that the tissues are arranged around it, which sort of merge into that almost uh, landscape type background with a, 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 some green fields and, and a blue sky, maybe. Thank you. Stone chat with Rob. Beautifully sharp bird, um, catch light. The, um, it's doing something uh, with its grub. The grub has got a lot of detail in it. And then you've got this really interesting detail on the tree stump that it, it is on. Um, but it, that doesn't detract at all or, or um, draw our eye away from that bird. We look it in the eye. Um, it's perhaps on its way to the nest with, um, with that grub. Uh, but a, a, as a male stone chat, it's absolutely gorgeous. Can we hold that one, please? Just numbers. Yeah, I, like, I like the 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 way the photographer has gone right in with a long lens on, on these um, probably heifers, um, right in. Uh, it's all sharp. Um, you've got a, a very unobtrusive background, just that bit of blue sky and, and some little uh, white clouds, um, and you've got that interesting collection of um, the the back of the foremost uh, beast. Um, and one eye, and, and the flies that are that are uh, in in its hair on its face. Uh, it, it, the um, the way the the one at the back is parting is is arranged, um, uh, and the ears, and just those two ear tags, and um, it's different. And I really enjoy in this one. Can we hold that one, please? The ghost at Revo Abbey. Yeah, I, I think um, the um, the ghost that has been put into this shot really suits the the building. Um, it's got that sort of almost Victorian workhouse feel about the, um, the 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 model that's been put in. It's probably from a from a reenactment or a ragged Victorian day, perhaps. Uh, and you've put her into uh, Revo Abbey. Uh, the um, that sort of uh, almost submissive look um, and the way she's dressed sort of suggests poverty and perhaps the ghost of someone who died a lot younger than they needed to, um, I, I think works well. And I, I'm, it's telling me a story and I, I'm starting to, um, to fill the, the detail in. The two things that I am not so keen on on this one, those two very light areas at the very top of the frame, which are obviously windows above the windows we can see, uh, and that little bit of blue, of the blue sky. Um, I don't. I think if you crop those out, it would keep our eye very much focused. The other is the fact that there's two windows, and um, I, I wonder if the left half of this picture is needed at all. The the way the uh, ghost is looking down and looking slightly to our right. Um, I, I wish she was more to the left hand side of the frame uh, and looking down into the frame rather than on the right hand side and looking down. That is nitpicking, but um, with such good images tonight, uh, to, to find a winner, I'm going to have to do that, I'm afraid. Thank you. Starting to fade. Yeah, I like the title, Striving to Fade, and they are, aren't they? They're just, just you wouldn't throw them out yet, but they're just past their, uh, their best. Um, beautiful, subtle. Um, lighting, colour, the lighting has been handled very well. You've got directional light coming from the bottom right hand side. Um, there's a shadow, but it's not a harsh shadow. You've got that wonderful textured background, um, which is obviously uh, what the flowers have been positioned in front of rather than something that's, um, that, that's come out of the computer, I think. Um, and um, the position uh, slightly to the left of centre of the vase uh, with the light coming in and, and the three flowers sort of looking into the into the frame, one up to the top right, one up to the top left and one a bit more to the right. Um, good choice of, of, of the vase that goes with this. Um, it is, apart from the yellow centres of the flowers, it, it would work just as well in mono, wouldn't it? Thank you. No diving. 
great record shot. I'm, I'm assuming this is the bar of a of a, <clears throat> a hotel somewhere warm where the windows aren't needed, um, and a, a great sort of shot that they would love in their in their brochure, I would guess, or on their website. Um, the the bar itself has got nobody in it, and, and in a way, it was almost a pity there isn't there isn't a customer in there. Um, <clears throat> It, it, it's it's sort of empty and um, the pool in front um, I think gives and the shadow the sorry the reflections of the pillars and um, <clears throat> draw us into the back I do find though that there's quite a, a, a harsh clash between the turquoise of the of the pool um, and the very ornate uh, and very sort of subtle colors of those screens as you and the, and the furniture as you go into the bar <laughs> Um, the lighting is, is gentle and um, the, the title No Diving comes from the sign on the right hand side which doesn't really distract us. I think you have to look for a minute before you see that, uh, that sign. Thank you. Iris. Again, fabulous colour combination. The, um, the blues and purples of the, of the flower against the um, out of focus stalks. There's no real um, uh, the, the very shallow depth of field, there's no real uh, uh, problem with the background other than its brightness. Um, and it's difficult to do to do a lot with that other than tone it down and artificially light the flower. Um, I like the way the flower's positioned in the frame. But the, the to me, the greens at the background are just a bit too overpowering for the flower and for the, for the subtlety of the flower and the delicateness of it. Thanks. Oriental Lily and Brian. Yeah, um, I saw Brian before I saw the title. Um, <laughs> and it's a fun shot. And um, do you know, I have a feeling the photographer might have put Brian there. Um, but it's, uh, it is it is a fun shot. And um, it, it's a shot that may well have been put into a theme competition uh, originally, I'm not sure. Um, the shape of the stargaze of Lily flower um, the, the position of the snail um, and the almost milk bottle like vase uh, are, are interesting. I do find though that the flower, um, um, well we're not talking about a flower arrangement here are we, but the flower sort of leaning over, um, uh, either, either keeling over or bent over to look straight into the camera. Um, all those interesting shapes in the petals and the colours in the petals are great, um, but this isn't necessarily about that, it's about the, the um, the snail and the position of the, and juxtaposition between the snail and the very delicate flower. Thank you. Spring dawn. Yeah, and I think um, certainly in April, with the um, amount of sunshine we've had, um, if you didn't mind getting cold, there were some good opportunities for spring dawns. And this looks almost as if it's been shot on, on the marshes or somewhere very very flat. Um, the sky is fabulous. The, um, the clouds at the top of the shot, the position of the, of the tree, the lone tree, and, and again, we do like lone trees, don't we, as photographers, but the, the, um, the colours that work well, the deep blue of the um, sky, particularly up at the top of the frame against the reflected sunlight. For me, maybe the, um, the uh, marsh or the grassland at the bottom of, of the shot, which forms a nice base for the picture, but um, because of the, the strength of that light coming and reflecting off it, almost you lose the half tones. Um, it, there's no real detail in that uh, in in that base. <laughs> it's just a series of orange and, and darker stripes running across. And of course, the difficulty always of shooting into the sun is you've got that big area of of, of burnt out um, element in the frame. But you've hidden that behind the tree to an extent, and the tree almost frames that. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, really interesting flower to, to shoot into. Um, and the difficulty always, you've taken this with a macro or a close-up lens, and um, you've got a very shallow depth of field. You've picked up the stamens with the pollen uh, on as probably the, the, the sharpest point, the, focus, the focusing point. Um, you've got that lovely framing. And again, the very subtle um, color palette with the greens and the yellows. Um, to me, there's just not quite enough sharp in the centre of the, I'm, I'm my eyes drawn in and then 
it's really not sharp down there and it's a sort of shot if you are into focus stacking that it, it would be interesting to to focus stack and just get more of that center um, in focus and a little bit sharper but i do like the framing the, the, of the light area that goes around from the petals thank you again some strong images here um, my third place is um, the mother and child Komodo Island. I think that's a very strong portrait. My second is the meerkat, uh, a strong portrait. That's a very different sort of portrait. And first place goes to this stone chat, which is an absolute fabulous shot. And my judge's pick, if I was having one of these pictures on the wall, it would be not just numbers. So I think it's great. Um, well done to Tori again for Stone Chat with Grub. Uh, Grub. Uh, second is Lorraine Green with Meerkat. And third, Derek Collis with Mother and Child from Motor Island. And well done, Andrew Carpenter for, and Lorraine Green for Holdbacks. Yeah, well done again, well folks. Done. Great set of well Sorry. Thank you. Well done, everyone. Okay. Three wine bottles and a glass. Again, a very, a very specific uh, title for this. Um, really attractive piece of, of low key work with that bat light coming through just defining in, in the case of the bottle nearest us, just defining both sides of the neck and then just the edges. It, it forms a repetitive pattern with a stop at the end, which is, is um, very satisfying to look at. Um, and uh, you've got the, uh, everything is, is absolutely black apart from those highlights that are just coming from, from the light. Light has been controlled very well. Um, and I, I do like the, the way it's spaced and the, the glass at the end. I think that just brings us to a, to a stop. My only very, very minor niggle is I just wish the top of this bottle, the, um, the screw top uh, in the nearest bottle was a bit sharper. My eye goes back to that. It's not the strongest uh, tone, uh, in the brightest tone in the shot, but it um, is prominent in the, in the picture. And um, I just wish it was that little bit, bit sharper, but I do like the idea of this. Thank you. Where is the Edmonds? Yeah, I, I recognise this. I, on the occasions I, I used to work in Bury St Edmunds some days, and uh, and, and that was part uh, on the on the route to uh, to a sandwich at lunchtime. Um, the the framing of the arch works really well. Um, the textures in the stonework and the arch, you, even though we're underneath the the, the tower and um, going into the abbey and the um, the stonework that is facing us at the very top in the corners uh, is very much in the shade. There's detail there, uh, which, which I, I think is good. Um, and then you've got the the uh, obviously the steps and the and, and the and the gate. It's a shame the gate is shut and it's probably locked shut because that forms a bit of a barrier to uh, to, to then our eye going up the street. Um, to me, perhaps the post processing has just gone a little bit too far. Um, you, you've pulled out some detail in the in the stone. You've pulled out some detail in the sky. You have got a bit of a halo around the arch um, where the arch and the sky meet, um, and and um, certainly around the edge of the building. So I think perhaps that's just gone a little bit too far, which which can happen. Thank you. Michael Marshes. Yeah. Um, this is a very tranquil scene, isn't it? it, it the, the, the boat um, anchored, sails down, anchored. I can church in the background uh, on that little promontory that, that sticks out into the river. Um, and what I particularly like is these reeds that are around the, the landing stage on both sides of it, which form a, a, a base to go into the picture. What um, I'm not so keen on, I, I, I don't know what you've done to the sky. Um, have you put a texture on it or is that just 
uh, a byproduct of, of processing, but it's a very blotchy sky and I'm not sure it's adding anything to, to the picture. Uh, and the other thing is, it's an image which in a way, um, particularly in a print competition as this, this would be, I'd like to see some blacks and some whites and what have we got in it is, is shades of gray. Um, the dark areas, particularly under the landing stage, um, if they were blacker, I mean, they would really come out well on a print as it is, uh, they won't. Uh, I like the fact you've got the two birds at the end of the landing stage. I think that just adds a little bit of interest. Um, the landing stage does of course also form a bit of a barrier to the view and the, and the boat. Thank you. Frozen mushrooms. Yeah, this is different. Um, the, to me, what I like about this is there's some detail in here. You can recognize bits of mushroom, the, um, the gills from under the, uh, the mushrooms uh, right in the center, and then the um, edge of the, of the cup of the mushroom down in the bottom right-hand corner, and then top right, you've got the, again, the, 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 the whole mushrooms frozen. Um, and it works well in, in mono because it's all about tones and textures, and, and that's what you've got. The color is immaterial almost. Um, the only thing that I don't like is that top left-hand corner. There's, there's that very bright area, which has almost got a, a straight edge to it. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's very bright and it tends to draw, it certainly draws my eye up away from what you really want me to look at, which is those fabulous textures in, in the center. Thank you. Badgered. Yeah, uh, a great bit of street photography. Uh, it's reportage, isn't it? We've got a got a protest going on. We've got a a badger in a in a parker um, with with a placard, and um, it, it, you know it's good it's good news stuff. The difficulty with this, of course, you've taken this. I'm assuming that there's there's more people protesting and more placards around, and you've gone in on on this particular one. Um, but it, it's very messy. You've got the um, the, the badger, which is what you really want us to look at from the title, um, with the, um, I guess it's a lady behind, um, the sort of, uh, whose face is obscured by part of the, of the badger. You've got the lady here, this side, who is looking straight at the camera and, and wondering quite what you're doing. And then you've got the theatre uh, and the Costa Coffee, and all that's competing with the, the detail that you want us to look at, uh, which is a shame. But, um, Chart where it needs to be. We've got the um, the badger and the placard, and um, it, it's a strong bit of photography in the sense of of recording uh, a, a, a news story. Really, thank you. Eye contact. Uh, yeah, I I I like this. Um, what do I like about it? I like the. I'm assuming that this is is. Um, you, you've shot this and it's a piece of street photography and the, and the couple don't know you're, that you're photographing at all. I might be wrong, but that's how it looks. Um, you've shot from a low position um, and that emphasizes that relationship between the two people and also conveniently puts the, their faces and heads <coughs> against the sky. So you've got no distracting background. Um, you can see the girl's eyes or one eye and a little bit of the other eye and you can see that eye contact. You can only see the, the eyelashes on, on the guy's eye. Uh, I'm not too worried about that because the way they are, the closeness and the way they're looking at each other and the inclination of the heads and so on, it, it's obvious that they're talking to each other, listening and, and looking into each other's eyes and eye contact is what it's all about. Um, and it, it feels, I'm, I'm not too worried about the, the hair flying um, in what is obviously a, an outdoor shot. If it was straight portraiture in a studio, that would, um, that wouldn't look too good, but I think it just emphasizes the the nature of, of this this shot. Thank you. Dove Court Low Lighthouse. I was talking to um to, to Lorene and, and, and Roger before we started tonight and I, I rather unkindly said and I didn't mean it unkind in an unkind way. <laughs> Judging around um North Essex and, and South Suffolk. Um a competition is not a competition without a shot of Dover Court Low Lighthouse in the same way that a competition in Norfolk isn't isn't right without Cromer Pier and, and a shot um, over in the East Midlands without the church on the edge of Rutland Water. They're iconic images that people go back to. 
And I think this is a very good shot of, of an iconic image. Um, the, the cloud, the lead in, the long exposure that um, blurs the detail. And this is a, an exposure that I'm guessing will be of, of, of the order of 30 seconds to a minute, maybe a bit more even. Um, and you've got just a little bit of definition in the, in the waves, uh, a little bit of movement in the cloud. Uh, and there standing rock solid, thank goodness, in the middle of it all is, is, the, is the lighthouse with that lovely lead into it. Um, the lead in goes a little way into the sea uh, from the breakwater and then is picked up by the reflection of the white part of the lighthouse that takes us on out there. Thank you. I can't get Karen. Now in Norfolk or parts of Norfolk, this would be considered a posh garage, uh, sorry, a cart lodge. <laughs> um, uh, but no, you couldn't get the car in, could you? Um, some lovely textures in this, the, uh, over the over the door, the beam over the door and the very weathered panelling above that. And um, yeah, I'm surprised the roof's still on it, although it doesn't appear to be at the back of the garage. <laughs> um, and the wall certainly, certainly isn't there. Um, you, got a depth of field that gets the front sharp, the back sharp, um, because it's been shot in the winter or early spring. Um, you, you've got branches coming over, but they're not really obscuring um, the details of this, this wonderful building, which is on the point of going, going, going over to the right, I think, and the wall's already gone that way. Um, I like the textures. It, I like the lighting that's inside, uh, and that's obviously come through the, through the roof. I do find on the left hand side that bright bit of sky a little bit distracting uh, and I wish that wasn't there. I wish it had been cropped a little bit tighter there. Um, and then you would really be exploring what's going on in this garage and what the pile of what appear to be mattresses at the back and so on. Um, but that, that light on the edge of the frame does pull the eye a bit. Thank you. Glass bars and table. Again, a very competent bit of, of backlighting um, using the, the glass, the vase um, on the table um, and, and the lighting's been handled very, very well and it's shot against a black background. So not only have you got uh, no distractions from the background, but you've also got into the back of the glass away from the edges which are refracting the light. You've got that very dark uh, base to it so that the rim of the glass stands out clearly. Um, I know the title says glass vase and table. Um, my only very minor um, gripe on this one is that highlight down in the bottom right corner, which is the edge of the table. Um, and I'm not sure that's doing, adding a lot to the, the vase, which to me is the, is the strong part of this picture. Thanks. Which house and this This is a, a, a strong record shot of, um, of the very iconic building in the Lake District, which, which sits over on this bridge. Um, and as a record shot, it works well. From a compositional point of view, um, you've got this wall that um, is right by your, your knee as you're taking this picture that runs to the left. You've just kept it into the frame, but it draws me. I want to see what's around the corner. Uh, and yet you've told us in the title that what you want us to look at is, is the bridge house. Um, and then you've got a bit of a distraction on the right hand side of that very light building on the edge. And again, I think if, if that was taken, cloned out or uh, cropped out, but perhaps better still, it would really get us to focus on the, on the building. Um, the one thing that I did notice on this, and you may have noticed if you've, uh, if you've looked at it, is the flying horse in the garden to the left of the, uh, of the bridge house. I'm not quite sure what that's about. Thank you. Farmyard friends. Yeah, um, very simple. The engagement, uh, seeming engagement between um, the dog and the uh, chicken, I suppose it is, young chicken. Um, whether the, the, the chicken was there um, when the photograph was taken or whether the dog was, was photographed and then, and then the chicken put in, I'm not sure. I, I don't understand why the dog is not attacking the chicken. Um, but maybe they know each other, maybe they're, they're from the same household. The chair, I think, suits this picture well, the style of the chair, the detail of the chair, but it's that engagement. Um, it, almost as if the dog is, is listening to what the, um, 
the chicken has got to say. Uh, I think this works so well in mono. Uh, the colors are immaterial. Um, it is about that engagement, about the relative position of the, of the two animals uh, and the pose that the, the dog has, has, uh, has adopted or has been, uh, has been encouraged to take. I'm enjoying that one. Can we hold that one, please? Just rolling along. And we were talking at the interval about um, the joys of meeting again in the hall. And of course, one of the things as a judge you have to be very careful with with pictures like this is to have a good look around the hall first um, and, and see whether the uh, the subject is, is sitting in the front row. Um, it's a fun shot. Um, and you've you've found a title that uh, just rolling along that, that pulls it together. Um, and they do say that um, uh, owners get like their pets, uh, and perhaps that's the case here. Do we need to see the, um, the ladies, I presume it's a lady, the lady's uh, head? No, I don't think we do. Um, I think this is just a, a bit of fun and a bit of juxtaposition between the... Um, Think. Thank you. Stairway to heaven. Yeah, I, I, I was um, I was bemused that that you can't see any stairs, but of course they're there. They're, they're, they're the spiral that's going up to get people to go up to that upper gallery is there, um, and the shapes of the architecture of, of this building um, make. Center of the image at the top, round, um, flattens off on the edge and then comes back at the, at the and then the corresponding um, and echoing right hand curve um, that, that takes us up. And um, there's some lovely architectural detail uh, and it's well lit because you've shot up against a, a rotunda, um, a light that's um, up into the sky and yet the detail of the window frame and so on is there, the window uh, glass is not blown out with 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 light so perhaps you've taken it um, uh, in very dull external lighting conditions but it, it's been well handled um, and there's nice tonal range in this from the blacks of the of the framing the whites almost of the uh, windows and then virtually every shade of, of grey between it would print beautifully and it would uh, on a, on a semi gloss paper I think it would um, it would stand out well I do find a, a, an irritation, and I'm not sure whether the photographer has, has done it deliberately to, um, to upset our equilibrium as we look at it, but I do find that center boss in the, in the center of the roof being almost obscured by the framing uh, of, of the picture from, from underneath. Um, a, a slight irritation, I wish it was central in that top part of the, of the frame. But um, maybe, you know, sometimes we take photographs to, to upset the equilibrium uh, uh, and, and the balance a little bit, and perhaps that was deliberately done. Thank you. Shadowy figure. Yeah, um, shot from above, figure walking up the stairs, re reasonably long exposure, of course. Um, probably the, the camera has been supported one way or another because the stairs and the, and the handrail are... Um, absolutely sharp and of course the figure because they're moving is, is a bit ghostly. What I do like about this is the way the circular steps, the um, um, spiral ste steps take us up to that top right hand corner um, and even without the figure um, I think that, that they would be strong. I think the figure adds a lot to the picture uh, and I think the figure's in absolutely the right position moving into the stairway and up the stairs the textures on the stairs work well. It, it prevents um, the contrast being too great between the lighter part of the stairs and the, and the um, front of the tread where it's dark with some sort of protection on it. Um, and I think it's quite key to have that handrail in as well, which again echoes the curvature. It, it's again a shot that um, I would have loved to have, have given a commended or a highly commended to if we were doing that tonight, but it is, uh, it is a near miss for me. Thank you. 
Yeah, um, a high key shot of, of, of some some roses. These are not um, old and dead roses with the petals falling off, but some some uh, but rosebuds in their the prime of their life that are going to um, sit in that vase and uh, cause some enjoyment for a few days to come. Like the arrangement, that fact that that one on the left is a little bit taller, I, I think works well. Um, the way the vase is lit um, with uh, very um, subdued lighting um, from the front. So you've got uh, not, not a reflection but a, or, or a highlight, but a, a lighter area in the center of the vase. And then it, um, the shape of the vase is emphasized against the background because of that shading on either side, whether that's been done with a, with a window behind the photographer or um, some sort of artificial light, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, my only comment and, and, and really wish on this one is I wish the camera position was just a little bit lower. Um, to me, you're almost looking down on these, um, on this vase and on these uh, rosebuds. And yes, you can see a little bit of the top of the, ro the rose. I wouldn't want to get right down to table level, but I just wish it was a little bit lower. Um, I, I do feel that we're, we're looking down rather than looking at. Nice size in the frame, works well. And um, that graduated um, base and background that takes us from a, a, a mid gray at the bottom up to a, an off white at the top works well. Thank you. Long Melford Water Meadows. Yeah, this is, um, this has almost got a, a sort of Victorian print feel about it. And um, if you if you printed this on a on a matte paper and put it in a a, a simple frame, um, I think it would it would pass as a, almost a Vic Victorian, perhaps a woodcut or something. It's it's got some lovely detail in it. What I am enjoying is the way the two trees on the right um, they almost sort of bend into the picture a little bit, and equally the one over on the left um, does the same and sort of almost adds to the framing that. Um, and very textured um, sky um, is is great and it just makes the detail the trees and so on stand out. I'm not a fan of um, of light vignettes normally but I think it really works with this and it has a feeling of of, of um, that the style um, of photography or printmaking in Victorian times. A, a very minor um, comment is on the right hand side as we look at it, right over on the right hand side, there are two little vertical white lines and I'm not sure what they are, but I wish they weren't there because my eye keeps going back to them. Thank you. Arctic turns. Yeah, um, great plumage detail in the birds. They are white birds at the end of the day. Um, shot against the sky, the exposure has been handled well. Um, there's nothing um, burnt out, the eye, catch light in the eye can be seen. Um, the, this is about the shape of the wings uh, and the interaction between the two turns. Um, I'm sure many of you have been to some of the turn col col colonies uh, where at this time of the year they're nesting and there's turns flying everywhere and if they're not trying to peck your head or your camera, um, they're trying to peck each other and, and they form some fabulous views and it's not an easy subject to take. You've taken it with a, a relatively fast shutter speed to freeze the action. We've just got a bit of movement in the top of the um, nearest, nearest um, turns wings and that's fine. It's flying. That, that's not a problem. Um, but the, the juxtaposition between the two, the position of the two, I think works really well. So can we hold that one, please? Rogan. Yeah, isn't Rogan a, an engaging Spaniel? Um, and I'm assuming that Rogan might well be being photographed by um, by his um, or her. I'm not sure whether Rogan's a male or a female name, but 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 by their uh, a member of their family because there's there's almost a sort of adoring look. That or you've got food. I'm not sure which. Um, it's fabulous details. Um, nothing burnt out. The the hair is. Um, is great. The background is is out of focus and not distracting at all. Um, a, a sharp where it needs to be, um, right down the, the the front of Rogan, the from the nose back to the eyes and the and the ears. Lovely depth of field. 
Um, and the fact that you've got a, a, a bit of lighting coming in under the tongue on that just makes the edge of the tongue stand out uh, better. My only very minor comment is I just wish the eyes were that little bit brighter and a little bit sharper. They are sharp, but I think you, you could pull more a little bit more detail. Be very careful, but I think without making it um, Rogan look as if he's um, boss-eyed and staring at you, I think just slightly stronger eyes. That's where we, we look. We, we form a view about animals and people by looking at their eyes. And I just think a little bit stronger um, would work well on, on Rogan. Thank you. Wadi Rum. I've no idea where this is, um, and that doesn't matter at all. There's a beautiful depth in this in this landscape, and to me, landscapes are about depth uh, because of the recession with those um, ranges of, of rocks and, and smaller hills coming back. Um, the detail in the more prominent one on the left hand side uh, and then going back and you photograph from up from a high position which I'm assuming is more rocks um, that, that you're on and um, you, you've got uh, interesting cloud you've got some um, um, corpuscular rays um, coming down from the gaps in the cloud just uh, we can just see them uh, lighting those areas in uh, in the scrub uh, going back towards the the rock in the back um, I think the exposure uh, works very, very well. I think the composition works well and balances the rock on the left-hand side um, against those more distant rocks and then with the tree in the foreground to add interest. The only thing which you, you obviously can't do anything about, I wish all those car, those, those, I don't mind the, the wheel tracks at all, but if you're not careful, you start to try and follow them and then you, you're uh, crisscrossing backwards and forwards. And... Um, they're almost a bit of a distraction. Um, if there was uh, one set going into the picture, I think that's great and gives a lead in. As it is, it, it, it adds a degree of confusion to me. Thank you. Twin statues and a ghost. Well, I think this is the third ghost we've seen tonight. Um, and I am enjoying this. And what I'm enjoying is the, the living statues, the, um, the souls that stand around in London, um, painted, gold or silver um, and the lady on her little plinth and um, uh, the fellow with her are almost engaging with the, the ghost that of course isn't there um, what they were looking at and what they were engaging with I've no idea um, take notes on the, the, the national um, and that provides a, an interesting backdrop for a shot like this um, all the textures in the costumes of the two um, living statues uh, and the um, the tin with the helpfully um, posted dollar bill just to encourage the uh, transatlantic visitors uh, to uh, to put some money in I think works well the ghost really fits this situation I think um, the size the position the degree of opacity so that you can see the detail through um, we know it's a ghost but and again almost engagement with the living statues it, it all becomes believable um, and and I do like this and, and and the the costume of the um the ghost which is perhaps again a ragged Victorian or a, or a um uh, a reenactment type type of uh, figure um it, it juxtaposes against the modern front doors of the National Gallery I hold that one please Um, this is a print competition and I looked at this and I thought well you know um, if you if you printed that on something like um, permajet gold silk which in our house we use quite a lot the blacks the richness of the blacks uh, and, and the trousers and the, and the chairs would come through and it would be a, a really powerful print um, I love it I love the um, uh, contrasts it, it is a very contrasty shot with this um, low light coming through the windows I'm, I'm sort of guessing this might be um, the um, cafeteria at the at, at Berry at the at the Abbey it might not be at all but it has that sort of look about it with the lawns outside um, so I think it's great my only grouse with it is um, what's going on on the right hand side with this out of focus chair to me it, it the the picture would gain anyway by cropping um, almost back to the edge of those curtains at the back, taking some of that right hand stuff with the 
with the salt and the uh, and, and the flour on the table behind the lady out and you would get rid of the chair as well um, but I am enjoying that I'm not going to hold it back um, uh, because I think there are stronger work tonight but I am enjoying it thank you Stephen Bonzo mm. there's some super detail in both Steve and Bonzo and I'm assuming Steve is the is the man and Bonzo is the dog um, but there's some lovely detail I mean, um, if you look at Steve's face, you could almost strike a match on those whiskers um, and the short hair and the and the skin tone. Absolutely great and well lit. So there's no highlights and, and no heavy shadows. Um, yeah, Steve is is we can't see his eyes, but he's obviously focusing on on Bonzo and Bonzo is enjoying the, enjoying the attention. Um, that angle, uh, the inclination of the head. Um, which sort of provides a, a diagonal, a strong compositional element in, in the picture. There is a fair bit of noise in the background, which is a little bit distracting, um, but it is a shot I'm enjoying. Thank you. Spike. Um, I think this is a lovely piece of portraiture. Um, again, a, a, I'm assuming a reenactment. Um, the uniform. Um, has that sort of look of um, perhaps um, First or Second World War uh, about it. It, it. I'm assuming it's a military uniform. Um, the, um, the, the, the insignia on the arm suggests it's perhaps a captain if it was British Army, but Lord knows if it's, uh, if it's an American, as it may well be with lapels like that. But I do like the, 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 the way that the Spike's face has been lit. Um, that uh, uh, stronger light coming from the left, um, but there is fill-in light on the right-hand side. We can see nice skin tones, um, the, but the detail then in the in the uniform, in the material and the insignia and, and the badges. And I think the only reason that you can believe that this isn't um, a, a current and modern picture, but, a, but perhaps someone in reenactment is the leather belt uh, in, in his Sam Brown belt that is, is very um, worn and uh, has been polished up, but is, is, uh, is, is quite worn. And I'm sure if he was on active service, he wouldn't be allowed to watch tra chain hanging across his, his tunic. But um, I really enjoy this, um, the lighting, the catch lights, that direct engagement between the camera and the photographer and, and Spike. I do think Spike's an odd name for him. Um, the, the, the guy may be called Spike, I think if it were my shot, I might be tempted to call it something a bit different, but I don't immediately know what. But um, can I hold it, please? Dog walk. Yeah, uh, it, there's a lot going on in this in this shot, isn't there? Um, we've got the uh, the log piles in, in, into the what appears to be a sort of park. It almost had a feeling of, of, of Central Park about it with those buildings in the background, but it may not be. It may well be in, in London. Um, I don't know. Um, the, the trees, the path that leads us up, and, and you know ultimately it's going to take you up to perhaps the road and then to those office buildings at the back. And then the two characters and, and the buggy down on the right-hand side, which are almost lost in this. Um, it's not, a, it's not a simple composition. There's an awful lot going on in this. You've got strong lighting coming in from the right behind the photographer's shoulder on the right-hand side, which lights the buildings and lights the logs. But it is, to me, a little bit messy. Thank you. Kitchen lines. I love the simplicity of this, the lines, as the title suggests. Um, the fact that you you can look around this, you can follow the lines, the the the, the right hand side that that um, highlight on the edge of um, cupboard or whatever it is that's in the working surface that comes down, the surface running across, and then the lighter sort of leg of the with the Honeywell controller in in the middle, and then that very mottled background. Uh, it's very simple. It, it's very enjoyable. Um, I'm not going to hold this one because I think there are stronger, but I think it, it, it's a very interesting picture. And in many other competitions, this would be up there. Thank you. Trawler at anchor. Yeah, I think it's more on, on, on beach than at, at anchor. It, it, um, it's got a Dungeness feel about it, but it may well be one of the, one of the beach um, fishing ports on the, uh, on the East Coast. I don't know. Um, 
but the the you know the boat has, has done fishing it's obviously current fishing boat because it's got um, fishing gear in it but um, it's been hauled up on the on on those uh, rollers onto the beach out of the way um, the photographer has um, used the anchor which is is um, obviously attached to, to the boat by that line uh, as foreground detail and it doesn't uh, obscure uh, uh, the boat at all it's well clear of the boat from from our perspective uh, and it's providing some foreground detail uh, and adds to that sort of nautical feel um, a very minor point a, a, a little irritation is that the aerial uh, on the top of the mouse seems to disappear out of the top of the frame and equally there's what appears to be a, a the um the, the, i never know what they're called but the, the metal frame at the back um that the nets are hauled over uh, on the left hand side of that on the left hand leg there's a, an irritating dust spot that once your eye goes to it you, you keep going back and looking at it um i, I quite like the, the fact we can see a little bit of sea and it just um, sets the context for this Thank you. Yeah. Um, you've got quite close to this long lens um, that the bird uh, and I'm looking at this to say what sort of bird it is. And I don't know. I don't think it's a, an ox pecker in, in Africa, but it's um, it's perhaps more jackdawish. I don't know. It's a covid by the look of it, but it's um, there it is cleaning the um, the um, deer or antelopes um, skin and ticks and at the same time having a, a meal in the process. I like the position of the bird. Um, have you waited to get to that position or uh, we, did you strike lucky first time? But that, that position between the eye and the nose of the, of the animal um, it, yes, it's it's a shame in a way that the bird's got a very dark head and we almost lose a bit of detail in that. Um, can't see feather detail or whatever, but you've got a, um, a, a mammal that's got a very light face. The detail in that mammal are great. The, the, the ears are the, um, if you like, the, the one end and the other end of the depth of field and they're both very sharp. Um, lovely textures in the neck of, of the animal. And then you've, I think you've... Um, taken the black the back all the detail out of the background i su suspect you've blurred that um, very skillfully um because even though you will have a shallow depth of field with a long lens um it's taken out very quickly the only detail is uh, right at the bottom there's a there's a few stalks down at the bottom um so whether you've um you have taken that, that back like that or whether it's just um shallow depth of field i'm not sure but it's very effective whichever way it's been done so can we hold that one, please? Minder or stalker? I have to be honest and say this. I had an opportunity to have a quick look at these um, earlier and I feel very uncomfortable about this shot and I'm not sure why it it it, it does cause me um, uh, some discomfort. I'm assuming that the two figures are not at all connected, although the title you know, suggests they might be, and they might be. Um, you, you've caught a, 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 an interesting looking lady with her uh, skin and then with their tattoos or, or artwork um, at some sort of event with other people walking around and the catering in the background we can just about see. And then we've got the guy, and I think the sunglasses uh, add to that sort of spookiness. The, the, the guy with his sunglasses um, who's probably more interested in you as the photographer than in the, the lady he's following. But it does have a sort of spookiness and, and a, 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 just an edge of discomfort about it. And that makes it a very powerful picture if it can create a, an emotion in, in your mind. I think it is, is strong. The, crop, the lady is cropped quite tight, top, bottom and, and to the side. Um, and you've got the, the, the guy positioned away. It's a shame those, those figures are as close in the background as they are. They're not sharp. Um, you've taken those those out with the uh, selective use of, of aperture and depth of field. Um, but they do sort of distract and come between them. And I think if if the hadn't those hadn't been there, it would have been even more powerful because you know it would have been the, the relationship or lack of relationship between those two people. Um, 
there's one or two little high high spots down on the floor um down by her feet there's a there's a little bright highlight and at the, between the two of them at towards the back at sort of just above handbag level um but if it were mine i think i would i would take out because you'd, you once you've seen them you, your eyes just go back to them but they're very minor distractions and, and i did say at the start i would nitpick um in order to find a, a winner out of way some some cracking work thank you the journey's over again storytelling in a different way um the title uh, which is so important in my in my opinion with the uh, the shot we see with the with the suitcase the travel rug um the hat and the coat uh are, are all telling uh, the story of, of the journey being over and um and the owner of um, said items is home and looks as if they're on their own there's no other coats or hats um and so I think in terms of, of creating a story it, it, from a very simple picture, it, it's quite strong. And it, it perhaps is a picture that's been taken in a, in, in a stately home or an old house um, with, with the hooks uh, and the panelling and the doors. The one irritation I have is the way that door is falling into the room. Um, and I appreciate you've used a wide angle lens and you've probably got as far back as you can. But I think if that was straightened up, in post-processing, um, it, it, they are diverging verticals and I think it would be that bit stronger uh, and, and help to tell that story better. Thanks. Textured bark. Yeah, it looks, it looks very silver birchish and they have got some fantastic um, textures in, in the bark and you've really uh, pull this together. If, if it wasn't, uh, I, I know it's a straight shot of the bark, but it almost looks posterized with the half tones very restricted. You've got the the darker tones, um, the sort of fissures, fissures in the in the bark. You've got the the light of the silvery color and and the greys, and that's about it. Um, it. That is the color of the of the of the bark, I think. But it does have a, an interesting feel to it. Um, and it's a good tonal range and it would make a great print, I think. Um, it, it is about texture, it's almost abstract. It, it would perhaps be uh, stronger if there was a more prominent piece of bark that um, became the focal point for the picture that your eye could comfortably go back to. As it is, I sort of look around those three ascending um, um, pieces of, uh, of darker bark with, with the light bits um, reflecting off them towards the top and then back down to the bottom my eye wanders around and doesn't really have a have a home to come back to thank you the tragic end of ophelia yeah um poor ophelia uh yeah it um i'm not quite sure what sort of water shakespeare uh, envisaged when poor old ophelia ended it all by drowning herself um, but it's um, it's interesting, and I, I, when I first saw this, I did rather wonder if perhaps your uh, daughter or granddaughter wondered why her doll had become very wet. Um, it's um, it's different. It's interesting. It poses all sorts of questions. It, it is for me though very messy. The the amount of uh, weed, flowers, um, some lily pads, uh, irises, and all sorts. Um, do tend to sort of pull your eye all over the place on this. Um, poor Ophelia, we can see her face very clearly and, uh, and, and, and her dress and so on, uh, which doesn't look very Hamlet, but I'm sure it is. But um, yeah, it's just, to me, it's just a little bit, a little bit messy around the edges. Perhaps that's what you intended, I'm not sure. Thank you. Seti at the tight. Yeah, this, this, um, I love this. I, I, um, I don't know this at all. I, 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 it left me thinking, is the SETI somewhere you sit down to look at the exhibits in the Tate or is it part of an exhibit itself? I know there is a, a, a SETI in granite um, uh, at the Tate. Um, I've never seen it, but I know it's there. So whether this is that or whether it's just somewhere to sit down and whether you've um, arranged the figures at the back or they're part of the artwork, I'm not sure. I'll assume you've you've put them in and you've um, you've arranged them uh, against this um, opaque um, 
glass or perspex um, sheet. We know we're in the tape in the building because we can see the reflection of the fluorescent lights and um, I, I'm not sure whether they add to it or um, or not. I, I'm, they're there. I mean, I think if, if they weren't there and you took them out, there would be an awful lot of dead space at the top and it perhaps needs some dead space, but not that much. I like the fact that the very little is sharp other than the two vertical lines and the actual hands and very little of this is sharp. And that again is, is intriguing. Photographs don't have to be sharp, but what I think we all like to think is if, if it looks as if the photographer intended them to be sharp, then they should be sharp. Uh, that's not the case here at all. I'm enjoying this a lot. Um, thank you. Well, hold that one, please. Again, a, a, a strong com competition here. Um, the I'll, I'll cover off the judge's pick first of all, and um, although I criticised it, um, the judge's pick that I would have on my wall without question isn't one of these, um, although they're all great pictures. It's the tea room picture with the lady enjoying the tea room. Uh, I just really like the tones in that. Anyway, to the um, to, to, to the ones that held back into the final. In third place, um, I'd like the living statues and the ghost. I think that's really effective. In second place, the farmyard friends. It's the, it's the engagement in that that I'm enjoying. And in first place, uh, without question, it's Spike. Um, well done to Brian Fleming for Spike, uh, Tori Andrews for Farmyard Friends, and Jill Beckett for Living Statues and a Ghost. Uh, well done to Lorraine, Tori and Steve on their whole class. Well done, Brian. Fantastic. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well Very done, good. everyone else. Well done, Very good. well done, Brian. Thank you. Yeah, well done, Brian. Thank you. Some good, good images there tonight. Tough competition. Yeah, it certainly was. Mm. Well, I think. Um, oh, sorry, I'm late. Hello, Bill. I think uh, the real con, the real congratulations tonight for the most extraordinarily forensic piece of judging that I think I've ever seen and for the most amazing stamina stamina sorry stamina stamina should go to Nick because that was a brilliant performance so I'm going to ask you to yeah. clap straight away I always do a little bit of research on our judges as you know I like to wind them up a bit if I can and I am um, of course delighted to know that Nick moved to Halstead in 2008 and in 2008 or 9 joined our, our very own club. So I went and had a look at the Hall of Fame. Oh dear. And, uh, and the Acker's name is there three times. 2009 in the novice section and Acker won the print and the PDI and in 2010 won the PDI league hand down. Uh, what do me. you reckon? It was not me, Liz. I hasten to add. <laughs> it was Liz. It was Liz. So how do you explain that? That's, uh, very good. I know now that you are the king of the, uh, of, the of the BPE with your with your three crowns and well on the way to the fourth. And I congratulate you for that. And um, and I think the North Norfolk uh, Photographic Society were the winners, and we were the losers when you moved away. So. Thank you very much indeed. I, I did think that the thing that kept coming into my mind all through your judging was, do we never learn as photographers? You noticed every little thing about, about, about the images. You noticed that little dollar bill on the begging bowl for the, for the London, for the London uh, statues. You noticed 
those two little parallel lines on the right hand side of the water meadows picture i went over every square millimetre of that picture to try and take out the bright spots and you still found two and that's oh, why that, I'm... oh but that's because it's your picture steve we, we're all the same we we don't see in our own pictures what someone else can see we're absolutely right we completely missed that but your ability to find that out was 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 truly impressive i think um without a doubt uh, you found the winners and i know you made it the tory andrews show for most of it well done tory absolutely spectacular yeah, well done, result uh, and well done brian but it was absolutely okay. yeah it was it it was everything so um what should we learn well we, we shouldn't over process we shouldn't have bright pieces on the edges of the image uh, we shouldn't have cluttered backgrounds uh, i don't know how many times we've been told these things uh, we should have a diagonal uh, across the picture uh, we've been told and told and told and tonight we were really we had our, we had our knuckles wrapped because we made all the mistakes that we've always made and and nick absolutely picked them out and quite right too so i can only say i'm full of admiration it was brilliant and i know i always give you the hardest jobs <laughs> which is the finales the finals and I think we're going to carry on doing that because tonight you've demonstrated an extraordinary ability to look at the details and tell us what we should know. So I'm going to ask you once more, Hafsted Photographic Society, to give Nick Ackers a lovely big warm round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Nick. You, Nick. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I, ought to, I, ought to say, I ought to say it's always easier to judge good images. <laughs>